here at the Cranesburg Arts Center. We're honored to host Daring Wood Falls' Subtleties of Oppression. We view this more as a social justice installation and message than a visual arts exhibition. Because this is an incubator, we're able to pull off some different types of concepts in here, and this is one of them. When Darian Wigfall reached out, uh, we knew that we wanted to provide him the venue and the platform to express himself. This is a four stanza poem that I wrote over the course of about four months. Hidden Messages speaks to the fact that oppressors use propaganda and narratives and media to tell the people that they want to impress, how they should behave. My friend Emily Timmerman, she had some paintings and some poems that she had done in that same vein. And what she did was interpret her paintings visually. So she would read her poem and then paint the images that came to her mind after that. I've written poetry since I was a child. I never did anything publicly because it's more of a private thing for me. This comes from a long tradition of poetry. My dad was into music, my mom was very creative visually. So over a period of time, I became more conscious of how the world works and how money runs governments around the world. And seeing the nature of what our government has done to its own people, to other people, to keep the people that are in power in power. I think most people understand that our government has done some really terrible things, but we all push it aside, just kind of sweep it under the rug. We need to take a more balanced approach at how we look at our history and how that affects how we treat each other. The American dream that's been sold to us over and over is not necessarily a real thing. I, I, I believe it's a fallacy and I believe that there's a way to achieve a better life. The way that being rich or wealthy is presented to us is more vanity than it is true wealth, which is being healthy, being able to see your friends and family when you want to and just have like control over your time. And I was an organ organizer of the Universal African People's Organization even before Trayvon Martin was killed, but then the death of Mike Brown just sparked something totally different than I'd ever seen and that anybody that was older than me had seen since the 60s. And I helped organize Ferguson October. I was up protesting in Ferguson, downtown, SLU, wherever else. And so through that, became more intentional about what I wanted to say to people and how I wanted to change things and see things change for myself and for other people. I always have been um, concerned with equality and like how people treat each other, but I wouldn't have done this before Ferguson. I don't think I would have been as bold with it before Ferguson, that's for sure. I hope it inspires people to look deeper at the, the things that we see each day, whether that's a billboard or a commercial or a newscast or something like that. Just kind of think of Who's saying the message? Why would they want you to have this information? And do they have your best interests at heart? And the last verse is a warning for us if we continue to treat each other the way that we do that we're headed to ruin. We all boil in the melting pot, fueled by media that never stops. It feels like a warm blanket first until our capillaries burst. <laughs>